afternoon and welcome to Wizards World. I am Jim Rodondi. Today, we welcome back Karen Wong with Globus Family of Brands. The last time Karen was with us, she spoke about South America. Today, she will be taking us down the rivers with Avalon Waterways. As a reminder, we would appreciate it if you would mute yourself so there's no background noise during the presentation. If you have any questions, please use the chat box and we will get to your questions at the end. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation. Take it away, Karen. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> and good to see you again, too. Um, as you can see from my background, it, I'm on a ship. Well, sort of. It's a virtual background. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. I will be closing off shortly as far as my picture goes, and we'll be getting into the presentation. You can see on your screen that we do have a shot of a wonderful area along the Rhine. And we'll be talking about uh, Avalon today, but just to give you a little bit of background, we are the Globus family of brands and we've been in business for over nine decades. Our Globus, Cosmos and Monograms programs are all land. And today we're gonna to talk about uh, River Cruise and that's our Avalon Waterways. So let's get started. I have a few things I wanna share with you and some ideas and something fun to say that the venture is up to you. We'll look at Avalon waterways from the point of view of a classic program, a classic cruise, something that's a little bit different. And we'll talk about the timeless rivers in the world that have become one of the most desirable ways to travel today. And it's difficult to choose where you wanna make your own splash. So do you choose a country, by sites, by unique experience? Well, today I'm gonna to talk about a few of the areas that would be of interest to you, but just before we get started in Europe, don't forget we're on the Mekong, the Ganges. We are in South America as well, and just some shots of that. So talking about our ships first, they're all alike, they're all identical cabin size, as well as something that's a little bit different with what we have. Our ships are uh, designed by our architects as well as, um, and we have them built either in Rotterdam or Bangkok. So what's important to us? What's important is that on board, we have sanitizer stations everywhere located throughout the ship. And our crew member health, that's the first thing I wanna mention to you. And our crew members are required to submit their health documentation and uh, to be taken care of before they are assigned a cruise. The other thing that's really important in this current travel environment is a rigorous cleaning routine, as you can see right there. One of the things is we do clean the cabins two times daily. We're open at 6 a.m. in the morning. That, when I say we, I'm talking about our housekeeping staff. And they're available all the way through till 10 p.m. that evening. So we have a lot of enhanced cleaning procedures. As an example, all of the public's areas and handrails, et cetera, et cetera, are sanitized every hour. So let's look at the cabins. And you're saying, why are you looking at the cabins now, Karen? We want to know about what rivers we're on. Well, I'm setting the groundwork for that for you. So look at our cabins. This is our... Um, open air balconies and 11 feet across with a nine foot, with a seven foot opening, my, my error. Uh, and what this is, you can see, if you were to do this at home, it's like four and a half feet across, five feet across as an opening. As you can see, it's wall to wall, ceiling to floor balconies. And look up here, you can see on the walls, there are no vents for HEPA filters to go to another cabin, not at all. The only way you have mixed air in here is um, if you open up your cabin, this window, the open air balcony for fresh air. If you wanna mix your air with what's out uh, with the other cabins or in the um, public space, you would leave your door open right here. This is your entry door coming into the cabin. I wanna show this to you from another angle. We call these our panorama suites. They're 200 square feet. You see it from another angle. There are no outlets here to go and uh, combine with air from another balcony. It's all within your own. So we call it our inside outside. 
balconies. You do have this, which is your vent that goes in the units under the table for your air conditioning unit. You have your refrigerator here. You have a left seat and a pop-up table, also called a high boy here, as well as a chair. And of course, where all of your messages will come through, your tour options, everything, your maps will be all on your monitor, as well as some wonderful movies. But better yet is your view from your cabin. So another shot of it, you can, here's the other wall I wanted you to see. There are no vents to mix with the air from another cabin. So again, it's open air balcony, you and fresh air only. So I wanted to talk about the Rhine. I mentioned that before. So many, so many rivers to talk about, but the Rhine itself, as you can see, it's about 800 miles uh, of winding river. But I wanted to spend some time on why the Rhine. And we call it the fairy tale fantasy of the Rhine. And we're going to start with the basics here. So spending a few minutes talking about the highlights and the real reasons you would want to sail along this amazing waterway. So starting with the high five. Here we go. The high five. They're here and it is cruising down a multinational waterway of the Rhine. Uh, you can go through five different countries, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Germany, France, Austria, and then you can go to those wish list destinations such as Basel, Strasbourg, Amsterdam, Cologne, a lot of different areas you can go to. Another part of that Rhine that's really important and most popular is it's all about castles. Between just Rudesheim and Koblenz and sailing through the incredible Rhine Gorge, there are more castles reaching towards the sky than anywhere else on the planet. An average of one every two and a half kilometers. You're stepping across uh, drawbridges into storybook settings to experience the magical days of fairy tales. And another way to look at the Rhine is special interest cruises. So we just looked at it as a way to, to travel as a classic tour, a classic cruise. You'll have all of your uh, port call, port calls. You'll have, two, uh, you'll have tours in each port, all included, full tours. You'll have your choices of whether you want to go to leisure, active, or whatever as a group. That will happen probably, you'll have some choices on one or two days of what you want to do. Now I'm going to look, take you to another area of traveling on the rivers. And a lot of these are offered on the Rhine. So we call it packing your passions or special interest river cruising. One of them is culinary. I'll take you into a little bit of detail on the culinary. And you know, we sail to the famous areas. So I'm going to do this one, and it's in France, on the Rhone and the Seine. Uh, those are the three cruises that, or the three I, basic itineraries we would work with. We work with the masters of wine on this, and I'll explain the difference between this and this sommeliers as we go further into it. You have a chance to, of course, take in all these areas on a smaller ship. You get a chance to, the best part, Taste the local wines and the local specialties of the foods as well as the gifts from the vineyards. You'll also have fun tastings like the ones with chocolate, or you'll have, be able to participate in a cooking class. So you'll have guided walking tours for foodies, and we all love that as well. Here's one of those that's in uh, France itself and a friend looking out the window at us. So one of the others that we do is our beer enthusiasts. I did this one. I'm not a beer drinker and I don't have an appreciation for beer, but I thought, gosh, if I go on a beer enthusiast cruise, maybe I'll develop an appreciation through education. So I did this one and it focuses on regions like Germany and Holland and Belgium and Bamberg, which has a family operated hop garden for local beer. Bamberg, of course, being a UNESCO World Heritage Site, 
as well as being in Germany. So this is one of my favorites. I love this trip. Did I develop a liking for beer? Well, I understood it more. I understood how it was made and I understand the taste through the flights. Another one that's new for 2022 is this is on the Rhine, but it also takes in the Meuse River as well. And it goes through um, Belgium and Holland. So we like to look at the foods here. But Belgium loves to, loves to tell us all the time about their fabulous ales. So you'll have a chance to try all of them. I just thought I'd show you a few of the labels here. But Moulin Freak, I'm sure you know these. That would be the mussels and the French fries. And the fries in, in Belgium are a little bit different. They're double fried. They're not served with ketchup. They're served with mayo. So it's a little bit different there. You'll also have a chance to taste something called a Geneva. Genevers are Dutch gin, anywhere from 4 to 40% proof. Um, also called a Holland gin. Of course, it's that juniper flavored traditional liquor. So that's kind of a fun thing for new for 22. I encourage you to do it because I think I'm going to do this one because I love Belgium as a destination. Our next one, we have wine appreciation. We have wine appreciation throughout the fall. There's a few in the spring, but you know, there's always that Beaujolais period as in Viviere that you can see here. Uh, you're into the Chateau Neuf de Pope, Pope um, countrysides. You'll learn about how wines are grown, how the grapes are grown, how the wines are processed. Now that's where the difference between the Institute of Masters of Wine graduates are versus our sommeliers. The masters of wine are more interested in the way wines or gra grapes are grown, such as in Chateau Neuf de Pop, they are grown in gravel, in stone, where in other areas, there would be a combination of soils that would um, uh, house those grape roots and would develop them. And there's a way for all of these to be fermented, aged, tasted, expectations are there. And the masters of wine know that part. Now, when it comes to the sommeliers, the sommeliers are really on the service end. So they are, we do have our sommeliers. We have the head of, uh, head of, of that whole area for Avalon Waterways, but we have sommeliers on board to explain the wines to you, to tell you about what to expect, and to have you taste and as well, uh, they do pour for you too. So there is a difference between the sommeliers and the masters of wine. And that is definitely, you'll see those differences on the wine appreciation cruises. You'll actually see it on most of the cruises, all the cruises we have. We also have our photography cruise, one of my favorites, love this shot. This is from our program that we do and it's on, um, the canals on uh, the Moselle and the Rhine. So this one, we also have a contest and we also have a photography uh, professional that goes along to teach you all the different uh, techniques and perhaps how to do uh, the composition of a photo if you're interested in that. But it's always a fun trip to take in. I'm kind of a, I'm a real amateur photographer, but I love to take pictures of places I've been to. Another one that we have is our garden of nature. And these begin at the beginning of the year. So first part, first quarter, we start the end of the first quarter in March as we go into our tulip times. In Holland, of course, we have our Kuchenhof Gardens. But 2022 is really, really important because it's the year of Floriad. And Floriad takes place every 10 years. So the last time it happened was in 2012. And basically it takes five uh, parcels of land throughout Holland and puts it out to countries around the world to come up with themes um, that match what the theme of the event is next year. And it has to do with um, green, being green in the urban world. So um, the best five by their selection committee will uh, be chosen. They will have those pieces of land to develop and present and you will see them anytime from April until September. And uh, that's next year, 2022. If you're going in the fall, every year there's something called the Zundert, Z-U-N-D-A-R-T flower parade. 
It goes back to 1936 and it celebrates Van Gogh, the uh, painter. And you will learn all about his paintings through flowers. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the year, it's all tulips, right? Well, in September, we don't have those tulips, but we have the tulip of the fall, which is called a dahlia. So you will be very surprised to see some of the most beautiful um, floats ever. There are about 20 floats each year, and it is judged. So it's a juried panel that gives various prizes to um, the, the, the floats and recognizes them in various ways. Our next one has to do with our storyteller series. We call it Once Upon a River. And to name a few, we have Diana Gabaldon in the upper right-hand corner. She's from the Outlander series and she loves river cruising. And it's a chance to go on an encore cruise with Avalon Waterways. These celebrity hosted cruises invite all travel enthusiasts just like yourself to meet legends in legendary landscapes, to sail past fascinating areas like castles and uncovering cliffhangers. And you're in the company of award-winning artists. What's interesting about this group that we have is there are nar narratives from the novels, just like Diana uh, Gabaldon. There, and we also have Candace Bushnell. But we also have uh, right here, Jillian Green, Jill, I'm sorry, Jillian Flynn of Gone Girl thing, as well as Sharp Objects. And then we have our lyricists and our humorists with um, the gentlemen who are joining us as well. Ask your travel wizards agent for more details. These do book up very fast, I will tell you that. They're really popular. So as we move on, we have, there we go, the end of the year, as we come to the end of the year, we will have our holiday cruises on both the Rhine and the Danube. And you can see right here, here's one of them that will go from Vienna all the way to Nuremberg. And it's a chance to really take in the views, take in the Christmas markets, take in some of the real goodies like the Christmas stores. Uh, you'll have a chance to try the markets. This is one that I took in Strasbourg that is at the Christmas market itself. And you'll have a chance to try all the gruel wine that is offered at the various uh, markets and you co can collect the mugs. There's a different mug for every market. So just something else to bring home. So you'll have a chance to share all the music, the stories and traditions of the holidays in uh, Europe. You'll come back ready to celebrate here in at home. And then we have, I just don't want to, I don't want to miss this. I want to put this in there so you're aware. So that from May until October is Oberammergau. And Oberammergau is the passion play. And we do this in conjunction with a romantic rhyme program. And the rhyme program itself uh, can start in um, Amsterdam, and then it will end in Basel. From there, you can go for a night in Munich, two nights in Oberammergau. The Passion Play tickets are included. The Passion Play only happens once every 10 years. It was supposed to happen in 2020, but for obvious reasons, we had to move everything to 2022. It celebrates uh, every, um, the time period from, um, it portrays the time period from Monday, Thursday to Easter Sunday. So over that four day period, you also have included a night in Innsbruck. So you get um, not only land, but you also get river crews on this. You can see we have space on the May departures. I'm gonna talk about another way of traveling on the cruises and obviously we have it on the Rhine, we have it on all the rivers. We call it active and discovery. I mentioned that we have, um, you're able to go on trips that take you uh, on all of our cruises where you would have big groups that would do leisurely or you could do a more active pace. And that happens a couple of days. That's on the classic cruises. On an active and discovery, you have choices of your activities every day. 
So I'm gonna show you a little bit about that. So who are these for? These are for people who are new to river cruising. They're accustomed to being more active on their trips. They wanna do more exploring. They want to do more discovery. And it's also for people who want to combine that. They want the leisurely classic tour uh, when they're in ports of call, but they also want to have the option to do other activities as well. It's also great for families and friends. The multi-generational travel is very popular. It was popular in 2019, 2020. It would have been popular for 20 uh, throughout, but for obvious reasons, we had to delay that. And then for the well-traveled, to look at the destinations from another point of view. So what does this mean? Well, as an example, you saw this itinerary before. Uh, you can go from Amsterdam to Basel or Basel to Amsterdam. Of course, I'm staying with the Rhine in this and you can combine it with land, but you would have all of these destinations that would offer opportunities for you to travel on that would give you other activities such as this one. This is an active in discovery on the Moselle River. So on this one, you would start in Remick. So you're coming from Paris, you'll go to Remick. And then you make your way, you see all your stops here, all those black dots are your stops. And the red is where your cruise will end. It's eight days and seven nights. And every day you will have options to choose from, whether it's active and discovery, discovery as well as leisure or classic. I'm gonna give you a couple examples of that. So here we go. So you can chart, choose, as I mentioned, active, discovery, classic. So for instance, I just showed here, this is one of the castles you'll see. This is uh, one of the Dracula castles that you will see on the Danube. And that's the one in Germany. It's not the Bram Stoker one, it's the other one. So there are a couple of different, Mary Shelley, I think is who it is. And um, you can see where somebody got a little active here and said, this is where I'm going to hang and make my place known that I was here. Here's another one on the active. I wanted you to see a couple of fun ones on the active. They're kayaking. So you can kayak and you can canoe on these programs and uh, you have the options to choose on it. Another one is I wanna show you are the different ones that we have to offer. I mentioned the Moselle. Uh, we have the Rhine, which we've been talking about and the Danube, as well as the couple in France. You will have cooking options here. I did the Danube one and I did the cooking option there in um, Vienna. And we learned to make um, Wiener Schnitzel and we made apple strudel. And that was our lunch. So you have a chance to take all of that in. I'm learning how to do it, uh, to see the baking process and to enjoy all of the delights that come out of the oven after you've made your cooking efforts. You'll also have, I mentioned, kayaking. We also have oh, exercises in the morning for everybody to get started on. You'll have a chance to take in all um, the exercises. You'll be able to stretch out before you get out there to do your traveling. And we also have, here we go, canoeing. So we do have canoeing on the Danube as well as a couple of the other destinations. So, that's basically our three kinds of styles of cruising. The classic style on the Rhine, as well as our special interests on the Rhine, as well as our active and discovery on the Rhine. The only reason why I say the Rhine is because that's what I zeroed in on. But everything's available, as you can see, all those styles are available on the Moselle, the Rhine, the Rhone, the Sone, as well as on the Danube as well as um, those that are in France. So you'll be able to take all of this in. We were voted number one best river cruise ship. This is USA Today. And this was the Reader's Choice Awards for 2021. And we also just want you to know that when you make your plans, there's a lot of flexibility. All you have to do is make a deposit. Uh, it's a non-refundable deposit, but guess what? You can move it to any time later in 2022 to go if you decide as long as you make that change prior to um, final payment. So say you make a, a reservation to go in November of this year on one of the cruises 
for either one of the wine cruises or one of the holiday cruises. And then you say, oh, you know, I think I'd rather go to Floriad next year. And I want to go in May. I think that's what I'd rather do. You just take that deposit. You ask your travel wizard's agent to please move it to May of next year to one of the cruises uh, to take you to Floriad. So you could do that as long as your travel begins before, on or before uh, December 31, 2022, you're all protected. You don't lose anything. Just do it before final payment. So ship shape, sweet ships. We're impeccably, impeccably clean, which I told you about. That was our housekeeping and our maintenance of the cabins twice daily. Oh, here's the ship. I wanted to show you a little bit of the ship itself. So we do have a uh, club uh, lounge back here. This is our dining room. This is our great lounge where we have all of our, our presentations, our briefings the night before, the outside lounge, and we have our sky deck where we serve meals. Well, during this time period and six foot distancing, we're not eating just strictly in our dining area down here. We're using all of these areas and spreading out so everybody has a chance to have plenty of space from one place to the other. So you can see these are all our panorama suites, 200 square feet. All of them are outside. There's no inside cabin whatsoever. The closest to inside would be here, which would be our D and E categories. So you can see it is a half window. And then um, we also have the bridge up here, which you can visit at any time. Uh, and also have areas where we do entertainment, which is done in the lounge itself. This is the main entrance to uh, the reception area on and off the ship itself. So just as an idea, remember I mentioned that we are four companies. We are land uh, with Globus, Cosmos, and Monograms, and we are also cruise. So I just wanted to show you a couple of the combinations you could do, such as you could do the Paris Normandy on, this, on the Seine River, and you could combine it with the British sampler and you have the bullet train in between. Or perhaps this is really popular and we're going to Croatia, of course, and um, now, and we have the Danube from, the, from Croatia to the Black Sea. So it takes you all the way out to Bram Stoker's castle out in that area, Dracula's castle. Another one is the Balkan Discovery. This is one that I think I'm going to go on in October this year. And that takes us from the Black Sea all the way back to, towards Budapest. And then I pick up a land program that takes me through Croatia. So a lot of different combinations you can do. This just gives you an idea. Avalon being the river cruise portion and Globus being the red portion. So just a little bit about us. Um, you have what's called, once you make a deposit with us, you have access to what is called My Globus, and you can open it up on your phone. And it will give you access to all the optional tours that are available. There's not that many, quite frankly, when you're on river cruising or any of the land. We have very few. And, but there are some available. So you might want to check those out. And if you want to purchase them in advance, or at least do your planning time-wise, as well as maybe how much something will cost and you want to do your financial planning for your trip, you can do that. Then about two and a half weeks prior to the start of your trip, you will have um, uh, an opportunity to see your documents. Your documents that have the day-to-day -day itinerary. They tell you all about the meal services. They tell you about everything. Well, that's on what is called uh, Avalon Go. We also have it on Globus. We have it on all four products. So what you would do is just like you did for My Avalon or uh, My Globus, you would download the Avalon Go app on your phone. Just go to the app store, download it onto your phone and your sign in. Last name, first name, booking number. Your agent has your booking number. So you would get that information. The only people that have access to the information that's on there is you and your travel agent. There's too much security built in to allow anybody else to be in there because you have all your information loaded into there. You have all your TSA information that is required by us prior to joining us on a trip. So we also are offering our Europe, in Europe only, our Go Beyond, which is in the upper right-hand corner. It's like, why are you doing that when we have our phone? 
Well, all, whether it's my Avalon or Avalon Go, they really don't need um, internet access, especially Avalon Go. It works like Waze. It's all push technology to you. But if, say, you're in Europe, see, we're going through a change on this right now. We offered this before 2020 happened. And I'm sure it's, my understanding is it's part of delivery of the units because of the chips. So I hope it will be on there. If not, there will be other ways because we do have access to the internet through the hotels and uh, through the uh, ship itself. Uh, access on board is uh, available for everyone. So, and you'll have your password given to you. You'll know what that is through the reception desk. But as an alternative, if you're out on land and you're doing a tour, this would be our uh, go beyond. So just some of the tools that you'll have available for you. And with that, I'm going to say, be sure to travel um, and uh, tell travel wizards what you're interested in. I did forget, I will honestly say, I did forget to put one slide in here, which is really important. So listen carefully because this is an important piece. And this has to go, this goes with um, from, it's a message strictly from Globus family of brands for anything, anytime you travel with us. What is the requirement as far as vaccination goes? We require that you have the vaccination um, prior to joining us, more than 14 days prior, and we want proof of vaccination when you come on board, okay? We'll be asking for that before your final documents as well. Secondly, um, if you didn't have a vaccination and we require a COVID test 72 hours prior, we would need that information as well to verify that you have had your vaccination, and not your vaccination, your COVID test. And we don't accept the 15 minute rapid test, only the PCR test. Finally, if you've had COVID in the three months prior to the start of your travel, we would need confirmation that you are recovered, a medical statement provided, and then it would be put into your record. Remember, this is the Globus family of brands message, and it's a message that does not preempt any other country or government's message requirements. And that includes government agencies like the WHO, the CDC, or the NIH. If they put others out, that's fine. We have to abide by those. And, uh, but these are the three that are required by us. Vaccination verification, COVID uh, testing 72 hours prior, PCR only, as well as a recovery medical statements. If you've had COVID three months, within the three months prior to the start of your trip. And with that, I am going to end my presentation. You can see you have access to travel wizards all the way through here. And I thank you for your time. Well, Karen, thank you very much for a beautiful presentation. We, uh, we definitely appreciate that. Very enlightening, very informative. Uh, from the uh, sanitary things that you do on ship from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. to the COVID tests, and then, of course, the great destinations and everything you can see and do. If you have anything, questions, for Karen at this time, please put them in the chat box. I don't see anything in there now, but we'll give you a few minutes to type something in. I actually have a, a few items uh, that I'd like to go over if you have a few more minutes, Karen. And I do appreciate, <laughs> do appreciate you talking and showing the ships and the view from the outside in and from the inside out and explaining that and how those, um, uh, those uh, balconies work in a sense and how the, the rails are there to protect you. We can get the fresh air and how they all work and how all your ships are the same. So you don't have to worry about from ship one to ship 26, how everything's going to be the same. So thank you. Thank you very much for explaining that. I really like the specialty cruises. And I think there's got to be a wide variety and there's something for everybody. It looks like, I mean, from photography to food, beer to wine to active to inactive I just you know that's just so there's something for everybody on Avalon and, and I, I, I think that's great and I did want to touch on you had mentioned the beer uh, the beer cruise and how you went on it you're not a beer aficionado neither is my wife my wife you know beer should be outlawed she can't understand why anybody drinks it however 
when we were on a trip in Europe a few years ago, obviously not last year, um, we did take a tour of a brewery. And because one of our sons and myself, and my son does brew his own beer, and she knew that that would be something that we would want to do. So she obliged and decided to go, and she found it very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sometimes it might not be the product that you would per se, you know, indulge in if it's if it's food or drink or something of that nature but you know but you might find it fascinating on how the process is and how things are made so so i know exactly how you feel when you say that you're not a beer aficionado yet you still went on the beer cruise because you were enlightened and you still learned about it and it can still be fascinating even if it isn't your cup of tea which is what my wife drinks her cup of tea, <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> i will say i will say just interrupt you jim for a second there there is a big difference in the noise level between a wine pairing dinner and a beer pairing dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I did find that to be a difference that I definitely experienced. <laughs> a little more boisterous with the beer, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think so. It was really, it was wonderful. It was so much fun. Oh, we're, we'll just get ready for Oktoberfest that way then, you know? There you go. There you although, go. Although the wine tour sounds pretty good too. And I would find the photography one very, very fascinating as well. That's and of course, garden, tulips mm -hmm. and all, all the things. So there's something for everybody on Avalon. So definitely appreciate that. Your excursions. And I saw, you know, you're making the Wiener schnitzel and the apple strudel, which, you know, talking about right before I go to dinner is not very nice because now I'm really hungry. But, okay, those types of excursions, they're included with, uh, with your... Active in discovery. Active in discovery. So all that discovery. is included. Right, that's all included. You have a choice of other activities. You could do something like when I took the, as an example, when I took it on uh, the Danube, I also had a couple of other choices of things I wanted to, I could possibly do. I could do a walking tour that took me into where all of the locals went. I went on their transport, the local transportation, followed the pathway of a business person for the day or what somebody would do there on a regular day. Uh, so there were other things to choose from. I And there was also, I think there was um, canoeing as well. I'm not a canoeer. <laughs> Is there my I don't know if you call them being canoers. Anyway, and I thought, I really want to, I like food. Well, it just stops right there. I like food. So I said, I'm going to go on this. And I did that. So yeah, it's included. Oh, I know there was another one that was offered too. And that was, you could do a, um, you could go where they make violins as well in, um, in Vienna. And uh, we had a chance to go through the whole process of violins and how they were made. And it was very interesting because the owner of the shop was from New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> very interesting, but how it started and how those violins ended up at the uh, Vienna Opera House yeah. in practice. Fabulous. Yes, and been, been beautiful music, obviously, in that area of the world. Exactly. It really is. So I do appreciate, like I said, the variety. But one question I have is the capacity on your ships. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are, are, I'm assuming you're not running 100% of the stage of the game, but you're running at some lower percentage, at least to start. Well, we'll be, we will be rolling out slowly all of the ships um, starting the end of July. And it's really going to be dependent upon the rivers that we go to. The thing about doing river cruising is that you're going to go through the, you're going to be on the river ways of the countries. So that's the rivers of commerce to those countries. That's how they receive their goods. And that's how they do their trade. So for instance, if you are on the rivers in France, that's one country. So you would need the permission of that country to go through their river ways. If you're on something like the Rhine or the, uh, the Rhine River or the Danube River, they go through multiple countries. So like we looked at the Rhine, it hit five different countries. If you just do the Romantic Rhine, it will hit four. It won't include France. And on those four, we need an okay from the Netherlands, Germany, Austria, as well as Belgium to go through their waterways. So yeah. It's a really interesting process as far as uh, river cruising, a little bit different. So we, we're at, starting the end of July, you will see everything going out. And then if everything continues to roll as we hope and expect. As we hope, yes. we hope and expect, then uh, hopefully, you know, by, by 2022, we're, we're back up to full operation is, is my guess. 
Oh, no. We're looking at, uh, listen, I'm going to the end of November. It better be ready to go at the end yeah. of November. I'm going on the Danny. So, no, I want it to be ready by then. So, and that's going from multiple countries. So, yeah. I want to test it out, too. So. Okay, so e even a quicker quicker anticipation than, than myself, okay? And, and just to let you know, we don't have that much space left for October, November, and December. It's pretty solid. It's booked pretty solid for those times. So okay, there's a lot of, lot of pent up things. So, and 20, uh, how was 22 going? 22 is going very well, going very well. And we're also looking at 2023. We're opening up 2023 soon as well. Okay. So it really truly is time for everybody to start planning, whether it's exactly. six months from now or 26 months from now, it, it's yep. now's a good time because we want to make sure people get their first choice, especially on the popular cruises or mm -hmm. the popular rivers like the Rhine, which I know the Rhine is Rhine and the Danube. The Rhine and the Danube are so popular. probably the two most popular ones that 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 are out there. So I uh, appreciate it. Well, I don't see anything else in the chat. So I do want to thank you once again for being a guest presenter, not only tonight, but for your past interviews. And I'm sure coming down the road that we will have you on again to discuss something else. I know that you and I were we're chatting earlier about uh, other destinations that uh, your family of brands goes through. So we look forward to having you back someday. So thank you very much. And for you regulars or for you newcomers, just a reminder that we do do this every Wednesday at 4.30 for about a half hour, 45 minutes, and maybe even sometimes an hour. So we hope you can join us again next week when we go back to the Emerald Isle of Ireland uh, with celebrated experiences. So until then, we wish you a good night and a good week. Bye.